we greet uh, all the church that are tuned up with us with the peace of the Lord Jesus. We're here directly from Villa Velha doing the broadcast of the Sunday School. And uh, present with us here, the brethren from the church in Seattle do Soir, Pastor Sergio Souza, participating with us in this Sunday School. And also, we want to greet our brethren from Japan. We have here the seminar in Hamamatsu in Japan, Pastor Jusun. He's there following the seminar with us. We can see the children participating with us and also with the songs that are sang there in the language of the Japanese nation. And also our brethren from Buenos Aires. We greet them, those who are following with us this Sunday school. And also the brethren from Santa Catarina, Santa Catarina Palhoça. They have uh, consecrated another temple. We have the participation of our brethren in another victory there in their south region of Brazil and southern region of Brazil. And also we're praying for uh, the authorities. We have a, a couple of special service, services. We have Magé Rio de Janeiro, Visconde Borretino Rio de Janeiro, Londrina no Pará, and Minas Gerais, Dom Cavate Minas Gerais, Caratinga, Minas Gerais, Nova Viçosa in the state of Bahia. Colatina, we have a special service that was done in the chamber of um, the state representatives. Now, we also had a, a, a meeting in the headquarters of the civil, civil police. So all the church gathered in this period of consecration to the Lord in special evangelization. And this morning we are giving continuity to the studies of the seven letters in the book of Revelations. And we are here this morning giving continuity to the teaching and Pastor Gide Tier is going to give the first introduction to the topic that is going to be dealt with this morning in the studies of the Sunday School. My brethren, I'd like to greet everyone the peace of the Lord. This dependency on glasses is such a hassle. Very well, well. We have seen here the topics that are related to the prophetic moment that the church is leaving and the necessity of this church to behave according to the teachings of the Word of God for this time. The church has lived in a certain way, a gospel to a certain point based on the Word and on the Scriptures. But a few keep apart and the others are in agreement with A or B. They have doctrinal teachings. Each person thinks on their own way, but not now. Now the church is going to leave its last moment and the church needs to say why it is in the world and why it was chosen and which were the reasons why this church was chosen to represent the project of God here in this world and this is what happened in this ministry. We are not, we are not the heirs of the truth all are heirs of this truth, but we cannot uh, prevent from doing is to say the truth. And this is our responsibility. We don't have responsibility with a denomination. We have responsibility with a living word. And that's what is important. Why? Because this living word has to be lived. The, the word is read is one thing. The word is lived is something else. And there is a great concern that has been bringing the gospel to this day. And it's the preachers of the word. Everyone wants to preach the word. Everyone wants a pulpit in order to speak about Jesus, that Jesus saves, everything is all right. But they don't want to leave it, but they want to preach. They put their message according to it is in their mind, what they think, they, they conclude, and, and the project was left aside what the Holy Spirit wanted to dictate in order for church to come to its 
final time because the church is a hero not only of a promise but most importantly of a project that will go all the way to eternity. It's not something that will be spin around here like a philosophical thought. It is something that is extensive, not regarding the matter, but something that goes beyond the matter, uh, that enters into project of eternity, because it came from the project of eternity. So it's not something, a human thing, ours here. It's not something that I want, because God is not the executor of man's will. God is not worried what man is thinking. God has a, a work to be done, you may be a great writer, may great author, may be the best man in the world, may be the person that thinks that he's the holiest, but the Lord's not worried about it. And he is not going to answer, not for what he said that was good, because he didn't do anything great. Uh, uh, because whatever you say about God is the best. And that's not why he's going to heaven. He goes to eternity depending on his humility and the position that he needs to go as a servant, uh, the one that does not deny the word, that never changes, he's living the word, the truth. A while ago, the Christians suffered uh, uh, humiliation, lies, but they remained at God's feet and the victory is guaranteed. I'm not talking about my own person. I'm speaking about other brethren. There is a brother, he is present here, that in an unfair way has been accused. But he is under the justice of God. He is under the project of God. Blessed are you when you are uh, give you injuries. Rejoice. Because it's great of reward, because that's how they did with the prophets and the saints of the past. So if you're a prophet and you're a saint, you're holy, there's no other alternative. You are not going to be um, complimented by the world. You're going to be despised by the world. But your victory is guaranteed, and that's the victory of the church. So today, we are once again going back here to the understanding of this prophetic moment in which we're living which is to know in order to walk. I cannot walk, enter onto a path and to say that I'm going to get to that place if I don't take knowledge of this path. Who is the path? Now I'm going to ask a question to the brother who are listening to us. That's the first question to answer immediately. Who is the path? Who is the way? So the brand here, they are all answered. The way is Jesus. So you need to know this this way. You, oh, you don't need to know the history. Then I went to this place, and went to, and no, that's not way, what you need to learn. This is over. The path is Jesus. Jesus is the way. If Jesus is the way, then walk in it. If there is another path, then there is something else. You can find another path for you. And people in the world, they find their own path. Everyone may want to do according to their own will. Man is a free being. Today we have uh, almost 8 billion of people in the world. Each person has their own path. But is this the path? No. This is one of the paths. It's, this is your own path. It's my path. But the path, the way, the only one the article is a defined article. I am the way. So Jesus is the way. He is the way. So knowledge now of the the way is very important. So we're going to go to the first question that the pastor is going to ask. And we're going to maintain the connection. Well, we're going to give a little time for you, for the brethren, to answer there. And those who are here, also. if the ones here answer fast, first, we're going to wait a little, bit, a little bit and we're going to bring the answer. Because the same time here, and another thing that the brother need to know, nobody complained that it's not, there's no time. Because the Bible is open years to be read, to be known. 
And there are people that just want to stay on the bench, listening, listening, listening. They're listeners and they forget the ones, the ones who keep listening and forgetting and that the word is not staying in their mind. This cannot happen to servants of God. You need to listen and retain. And, and we are going to see here the prophetic moment which are living. It is not only listening. So now I'm going to hand the word back to Pastor. Pastor Alexandre Brazil. Uh, such a sympathetic character. So the first question we're going to give to the church today is the following. Which are the recommendations to the Church of Philadelphia? So this, these recommendations are the ones that the Holy Spirit gave to the church. And what can the church keep? What are the results to attend a recommendation to the Church of Philadelphia? Amen. From 7 to 13. The praise group will keep with the first uh, question. What are the recommendations made to the Church of Philadelphia? The praise group, <laughs> this side here is all praise group. Amen. The group here on the side will have the answer. What does the church need to keep? We need to highlight is the operation. This is the revelation Jesus Jesus revealed in the mind, and what what is his mad, majesty? It's if what the Lord is. What can the church keep in this moment? In the text. So the recommendation of the Holy Spirit is that what you need to keep. What's the benefit? So then the brand we're going to have the direction of what the Lord has for us tonight. What can the church keep? Since it's fast there, let us be quick here. Let's see the brand are uh, participating with us. We have someone that already found here the answer to the recommendation that the Lord has given to the Church of Philadelphia. Revelation 3, 11, I am coming quickly. According to what was said here, behold, I am coming quickly. Hold fast what you have that no one may take your crown. So we need to keep it. So if all the churches find the same answer of what the Holy Spirit has for the church at this last hour, you need to keep what you have. So that's the answer of this first question. And inside of it, Pastor Deduti has uh, a couple of remarks to make. And it's important for you to, to pay attention to. Well, <coughs> So let's just observe it here. Let's go to Tietira. And Tietira here, the instruction is to keep everything. Because there are people. They keep a little bit until the day they die. Just before they die, they forget. And then they die. And they leave to the side what they should not have uh, let go of the testimony and experience. So in Tietir, you need to keep it all the way to the end. And more, in verse 26, actually verse 25, uh, chapter 2. Until I come. So there is one thing, which is the recommendation here of Tietir, is what? Is to keep until the end and until the day when in which God will come, that Jesus comes. So here is the promise, because it's saying that He will come. So while He doesn't come, you need to put, to keep everything that you have. So then the word will be, what would be the word you will be using 
to encapsulate this. Only one word. Begins with B. <laughs> No, with P, perseverance. The word in this period is perseverance. So now the second one, Sardis. So we need to keep the word and vigilance. So you need to persevere and be vigilant. Pray and be vigilant. Why? Because in this moment, because I'm coming. And the promise is this. Look it. Look here. Pay attention because I'm coming. I am I will fulfill what I'm have promised. And he fulfilled he is fulfilling. And he will fulfill. And there is a word also for this that reinforce this understand. Repent. So it began from here. Going to see the instruction for the Church of Sardis from this point forward. Everything that was made here is wrong. You have all the reasons to go back. It was the thesis of the Church, the Apostolic Church. Go back to what it was there. Repent. Con don't continue the way it was there. So they left the project of God, of Sardis. So these tests we're going to see. You need to be vigilant. So now Philadelphia, what is said there? What is the recommendation? What is the recommendation? Be careful so that nobody may steal your crown. Observe. Be careful. So now be careful. Have this moment here because you may lose. Can you lose? Yes. So now ask the brethren here that helped us out and formulation of the question to read the text is in the book of Psalms. You read in Psalms and you read in Exodus. I already forgot, but they didn't. You're going to lose the crown here. The crown of life. The crown of those who were victorious. The ones who were faithful. The ones who entered in the glory. So here it is. So now I'm going to ask the brethren that are connected with us to wait. Because the text here, they already know. Psalms. Let's read quickly. Stand up. Very out loud. They add iniquity to iniquity and don't enter into a justice. Now the city can sit down. Now I'm gonna I'm gonna ask a brother to read a little louder. <laughs> I'm going to as a brethren, to stand up in the church. You're going to read this because it's very important. Where is the text? Psalms 69, 28. 28. Everyone stand. Pastor Sister can pick up the microphone. We are going to follow. And the brethren from all the church and the pastors also. First, what do we want? We want to show that, that let them be bro brought to it out of the book of the living and not be written with the righteous. So this is this story of saving one saved forever doesn't exist. Psalm 9:21. Let them be brought to it out of the book of the living and not be written with the righteous. Pick up the previous text. The brand new we'll see. Now, Exodus 
Yet now, if you will forgive their sin, but not. 32 says, Yet now, if you will forgive their sin, but if not, I pray, blot me out of your book which you have written. And the Lord said to Moses, Whoever has sinned against me, I will blot him out of my book. So the religion said no. The religion said that saved once, saved forever. That doesn't exist. The brand can sit down. Have you understood? Keep the text. The brand that are all of the, the country in the world. Write this text down so you're not deceived. So now let's continue with Sardis. The vigilance, Philadelphia is the care. And Laodicea, you're going to find the consul. It was like fire tried and gold tried on fire. So now uh, we're going to give the question for the. Uh, now we're going to give the next question. What does the church need to keep? What it answered. So now what are the results in in answering to this recommendation? So according to what the brand has done, have done, you have to keep what you have and. What does the church have to keep? You need to keep what you have so nobody will take away your crown. So that's the right answer. So the church has with it what the victor has guaranteed. You need to keep what you have all the way to the end until the Lord comes. So being faithful all the way to death. You're not, it's not worth to be faithful all the way close to the, to the end. You need to go all the way to the end. And what does the church need to keep? Keep what? What does the church have? The church has, firstly, it has the key, which is the knowledge, which is revelation. So the church, at this last time, the church has revelation, has instruction of the Holy Spirit, and uh, enter into the mystery of the word, the word that goes beyond the ladder, which is the spirit of life. It's the flaming sword that is protecting the way. So this key opens what? Opens what? The door. The door is Jesus. The church today, it enters in what the secret of God is. Uh, the secret is revealed to these prophets. God doesn't do anything b before revealing his secret to the prophets. So we have been able to reach it. The church of this last hour, the church of Philadelphia, uh, which is coming close to the rapture, needs to keep the knowledge and revelation in Jesus, who is, who is the door. Pastor Dirichi. So now we're going to have what are the results to answer the recommendation? So what are those results to answer these recommendations? The result is the faithful who keeps it. He will keep what? Because he possesses something that's very important, which is the crown of life. This crown, nobody's going to take away from you. The church, no one takes away from it. When man has this experience of God, or this church is completely reinvested of the power of the Holy Spirit. It knows what is reserved to it. There, there's an eternity reserved for the church, the crown of life. So whoever keeps this, that has Jesus, the door, have with that, that person the crown. So this recommendation, according to what the Paul, Pastor, Apostle Paul said, see now the crown of justice reserved for you, not only to me, but to whoever, whoever loves his life. So Paul fought a good fight and finished his race. He did a recommendation that was in the Church of Philadelphia. He kept it all the way to the end. He kept it to the end. He filled, fulfilled all the race that he had to go through. And nobody was going to steal the crown from him. And they're not going to steal the crown of the faithful church that answered this recommendation of the Holy Spirit. Now, Pastor, did you anything else? So now this question. So now let's, let, let us continue. We are in going over what is the crown that the text of Revelation says. So now, over which, which crown? Now the brand we're going to have an answer to this text here from the second question, which is here in the text. So now the answer. Which crown, crown is, is it spoken of? It's a crown of life. Text in 3.11. Revelation 3.11. So you can read the text. 
Behold, I am coming quickly. Hold fast what you have, that no one may take your crown. So this is the crown of life. It is very important to speak about the expression without delay. In the original, in Greek, it says, is related to a quick period of time, a short period of time, without delay. In many translations of the Bible, depending on, on the way in which the word is placed, it says the following. It is related to, to the banquet, to the supper of the Lord. So pay attention. In the original, without delay, it is related to a banquet with the supper of the Lord. And what kind of supper of the Lord is this? What banquet is this? Do you know? It's related to what? With the rapture of the church, with the with a supper that is going to be take place during the wedding. So there's an expression that I'm going to read here in the Hebrew. And the bread don't need this. So pay attention here. It is also related to judgment and judgment and it is judgment and punishment. Look. There's judgment and punishment. It's related to the supper of the wedding and this short period of time is a numeral the marks a time and interesting because in the translation it also speaks of the about the time of the night so when you speak about without delay you speak about an hour of the night as a piece of time the days already passed and now we are at night when we know that the coming of the Lord Jesus is going to come like a robber during the night And now uh, there is the parable of the virgins uh, when uh, the groom comes in the night. So now the verb is also related to is related to the past. So every time is a special hour for each event. So my brethren, pay attention. We are going to find here in John. John 4, 21, 23. John 4, 21, 23. We're going to speak about the same thing. And, and, and the supper is the banquet, which is related to it. By implication, without delay, is related to the time, the hour of a supper, a special moment of a, a dinner or a banquet. And this is all in the translation of the Greek. In the New Testament, it's related to time, and also in a different, and also speak of the temptation, the time of the anguish, the time of the suffering. It's about to come, and what what is it called? The Great Tribulation. Very well. So we're going to find Matthew fourteen thirty-five. Speaking about the same word, the same expression. So now let's go to the last question. The third one, right? Third question, right? This one is important. I don't know if the church is going to be able to answer this because it's very difficult. The church will the church go through the great tribulation? So now, what is the text in the word of the Lord? It says. If the church is going to go through the Great Tribulation, it's in the same letter, and, and we're in the letter of Philadelphia, right? So in the letter of the Church of Philadelphia, the question is made, will the church go through the Great Tribulation? So now go on the text. Now we can come. Go ahead. Revelation 3.10. Because you have kept my command to persevere, 
I also will keep you from the hour of trial which shall come upon the whole world to this those who dwell on the earth. So the answer is given. So the word temptation, to tempt, we have already saw is related to a moment in which the church lived all the time. It's the same word, tribulation, which is related to every moment lived by the church. It's not of the great tribulation. The great tribulation is, is the judgment that comes from eternity. So they came for great tribulation. Now they are in eternity. Has Israel lived the great tribulation? Yes, Israel lived. But now Israel goes, and the, after the great tribulation, it goes up, and will be received there on eternity. Then you might say, Gentiles, Gentiles, yes, Gentiles. They need to be in the midst of Israel. And Israel, when he came, when left Egypt, there were Egyptians in the midst of the Israelis. There were Egyptians that had answered the call and left with the people. But the Bible doesn't have this concern to highlight those few Egyptians. Amongst them, there may be Korea, Atan, Bilan. They may have missed Egypt. They came from there. So the church is going to be raptured. Those who are there in Jerusalem, not believers, the world that will be there, they will see the Messiah. They are going to see the same power in the same way that Israel is going to be crying, seeing that the Messiah was in fact Jesus, his power of government, of uh, dominion. Those who stay in Jerusalem that escaped the death there and believe they will be taken away. They will go up to Israel because there is a project of God to save by law. They're going to be saved by law. They're going to go through the great tribulation. Like uh, if they're going through the fire because they're going to be saved with Israel. In the church, in the arrival of Israel, the Lord has no determination. No, no, the great crowd that will be coming, that not only those who lived before, but the ones who are living the last instance are not those who have already known the grace. The period of grace is over. Not only those who are going to be touched by the Spirit. No. It's a product that the Lord has for the great tribulation. They're going to go through the great trials. And they'll say, no, I'm going through, through it. But I know now that Jesus is the King. The King of Kings. Lord of Lords. And I want, I want this blessing for my life. It's not, I'm not talking about uh, bad Christians. Bad Christians, they will stay behind, they will left behind. But they will stay behind. But the ones that are going to be given the opportunity are going to be to the ones, the Jerusalem, the product, to enter into the product of salvation. And it will, when the church will come down, Israel, the church together in the same project of the church in New Jerusalem, that is born, the New Jerusalem, is the church and Israel together after salvation. They will come down to establish a New Jerusalem. So it's going to be a new phase of the history, prophetic history that is in the Word of God. Very well. I understand that it's being very clear. Another doctrine. If you want to stay and wait and taste the Great Tribulation, want to find a way to, to sin and to say afterwards that you found in the Bible that you are going to live in the middle of the tribulation. All right, I don't care. You want to stay and in, in be in the tribulation, go ahead. There's nothing wrong with that. You want to pay and say it. Pay to say it, right? So the doctrines that now, the brethren are saying that the doctrines it's not just conversation here. We're going to see in the church of in, in Cantar, uh, Songs of Solomon, the church that stayed behind. So now, Pastor, it's, it's ready to be answered, right? So the church is going to go through the Great Tribulation, 
Well, the church is not going to go through the Great Tribulation. We're going to keep the word. We're going to be preserved from it because of the word. It was sh the flu. The problem is this. No, you can't stay here to bring the the Sunday school to a close because the time is already over. So it was pretty clear here that you need to keep the word. This is what is going to preserve us. As we kept in, in Revelation 3.10, since you kept your word, this is going to be our redemption. Is the word of the Lord preserved in our lives? We kept it in our heart. This is going to prevent us from going through the great tribulation. Very well, my brethren. This is over. So we need to keep the word of patience. There was the word that was given from the first days of the beginning of the church. We need to be patient and utilize the same word apostolic the some apostolic teaching so you kept the word you don't need to go through the great tribulation you need to keep the letter we're going to Uh, they're going to make a competition with the ones who know more about it, but that's not what I'm talking about. You don't need to memorize the Bible. This word is what is a promise of God to the Holy Spirit in your life, which is revealed, which is prophetic. This is in the book of Revelation. What is the prophetic? It wants to keep the word of prophecy of the book, not of the letter. Uh, the word is speaking about the beast. Now, it's, this is something that is, is, it doesn't matter to us. People are curious. They want to know. A few even want to speak about the millennium. You can speak about the millennium as much as you want. I don't care. I don't want to know anything about the millennium. I'm a little curious, but but I don't, I don't invite anyone to be worried about the millennium. I even say the following. What a word about the million. Uh, the best way is just stay here and wait. <laughs> Be left behind and wait. There are people that are waiting for the million who end up in the fire. Amen. <laughs> but we have a group of brethren here from Grajaú. Youth. We have many churches, especially we have the joy of seeing a group of youth being interested in the word. In fact, there are a few that are beginning now, and we understand there are a lot of stuff. There are many secrets. I have 30 questions regarding this topic. But what matters to us now, the doctrinary part, I believe the bride have already understood, right? About the Philadelphia, the friendly love, is very well the open door, the key of David. Israel goes back to its nation, and the door is open. This is all. This text of this letter it speaks of an open door. It's not closed. Come quickly. The church needs to proclaim this. This gospel needs to be proclaimed. But you're going to enter into a door. Need to enter and to, you need to know the mysteries and leave the mysteries. You need to enter to the door. You need to enter to the door of life and through the path of a religion. I'd like to remind the brethren that Saturday, Saturday we have a, a meeting with the pastor to close the year. We have also the theme of next year and the messages that need to be naturally brought to the brethren on the New Year's Eve. I'd like to uh, compliment the church that has uh, joined us this morning, has uh, participated with the Sunday School, and peace of the Lord.
have the brother understood the message in the morning here? Uh, said a lot of stuff, but have you been able to absorb it? Philadelphia speaks of the following. Keep what you have so nobody steals your crown. What did the church have at that moment? The word. Very well. You kept my word. Do not deny my name. Since you kept my word, I will also protect you during the tribulation that it shall come upon the world. So what the church had at that time, the church didn't have the crown. What the church had at the time was the word. Apostle Paul, he says the following, I fought a good fight, and the brother speaks about it. I finished my race, and I kept my faith. So Paul kept his faith. But the faith in whom? The faith in the Lord, the faith in Jesus. Because he saw a light, a voice spoke to him, who, is, who are you, Lord? And he said, I'm Jesus, the one who you persecute. And what do you want me to do to you? And from that moment forward, he began to obey Jesus. And he kept the, that experience and the faith that the Lord once placed in his heart, a treasure. So he kept his faith, and the church kept the word. So now we can say, what kind of faith? And uh, we can say the faith and, and the word is the same thing, because faith in Jesus, and the word also is Jesus. The Bible says that by faith, the worlds were created. So those are three who testified in the heaven. The Father, the Father, not the Son. The Father, the Word, which is the Son. But it doesn't say the Son. It's the Father, the Word, and the Spirit. So what was these people keeping those days? They were keeping whom? They were keeping Jesus. They were keeping Jesus. And because they have Jesus, they would have the right to a crown. They didn't have a crown. Like like us, we don't have a crown. They kept the word, and because they kept the word, they received the they will receive the crown. Since you kept my word, I will protect you when the tri tribulation will come to the world. So it will be a rapture before the angel of tribulation comes. Whoever does not keep the the word will stay and going to go through the great tribulation. So I come without delay. Keep whatever you have, so nobody steals your crown. So the, he kept the word. And the result of being kept the word, the reward is to receive in the crowd. So Paul speaks about this. Like the brother said there, from this day forward, a crown of justice is kept for me. So the crown is kept, is kept away. From this day, the, my crown of justice is kept. It's not kept by him. It's kept in heaven for him. It's kept for me. So, and, and the the Lord, the just judge, will give me on that day. So he kept the word. So then God kept for him all the way in heaven in eternity a crown. So he will receive this crown the day he presents himself before the Lord in the rapture of the church. Very well. So the crown is kept. So the, the Lord, just judge, will give me that, that day, not only to me, but also to all of those who love his, who his come. So the rapture is in the church. So whoever love the rapture of the church and keep the word, that get ready, the bride that will get ready, that has the lamp lit and that has enough oil, that will present the church, it will present itself at the door and present itself to the groom, will receive the reward. And the others, they are, they are not going to receive the reward. So Paul is very clear about that to those who love his arrival. So the rapture of the church, the Maranatha, we can say a great feeling in our hearts. We need to have this desire in our hearts because this desire in our heart is what will lead us to receive from the Lord this crown, this, which is the salvation, eternal life. In the battles, the children are going to sing. No, we are not in a battle, but the children are going to sing to sing another one. You need to be victorious in it, you know, to receive a crown. So now the whole church. 
You know it? Nobody knows it. <laughs> the instrumentalists don't seem to know it. So you can sing, children. Of a little strength, but the Lord strengthen us. Lord, we praise you for this instant we have uh, enjoyed fellowship. Glorify, Lord, because you have strengthened us every day. We have uh, poured out your Holy Spirit upon our hearts in the love of your Son Jesus. We praise you, Lord, because it's a reward in heaven to your people, to your church. We remain faithful in your presence, Lord. Take us home in peace and under your protection. Pray, Lord, in the holy name of Jesus. In your name we say the wonderful grace of the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, the love of God, our good eternal Father, the sweet and tender consolation of the Holy Spirit to be poured with the people of God, now and forevermore. Amen. Amen. I forgot to pray for the children. It's your time. Pray, Marcus. Pray, I uh, pray for the children to meet and the lessons. Be with them. Bless them physically, spiritually, emotionally. Bless their homes. Their homes are incomplete, Lord. Save for the glory of your name. Give them health and deliverance from real violence. Keep them in this faith so that they, they may keep this crown. We pray in the name of Jesus. Amen. Down here we need a helmet, but in heaven we will have a crown.